Welcome to Iron Anchor Cycles. I'm Shep, and we're about to install some thrash and supply bagger foot control parts on this 2022 Road Glide ST. Now, as you can see, this bike's up here on the lift, and it's got a whole bunch of disassembly done to it, and it's got some other parts going on as well. We're in the midst of doing a whole bunch of stuff for this particular customer, but decided to take a little detour and do a video specifically on installing this big stack of thrash and stuff that we've got here on the lift. If you are interested in the rest of the build, there's another video that'll walk you through everything we're doing, uh, but we wanted to go ahead and do an install video on all these parts just because I don't think we've done a video showing this complete setup from Thrashing. So basically what we got here was pretty much everything that they do uh, for bagger foot controls. So we've got footboards, brake arm, brake pedal, uh, shifter tip, uh, shifter linkages, all that good stuff is all going to go on. Uh, so I'm going to show you what we got and then we're going to go ahead and put this on the bike. So. This is not gonna be in any particular order. I'm just gonna open up these boxes and go through what we have so you kind of see it's maybe not totally in order. Um, but let's just start from the top. So we've got a set of P54 slim pegs and these are gonna be for our uh, passenger foot pegs. We've got a uh, brake pedal. Uh, brake pad cover, if you will. Uh, there's a couple of choices. You can run something that looks a lot like a P54, uh, regular size or slim peg. They come in uh, individuals if you want to use it as a brake pedal. Uh, customer opted to go with this instead. Let's see what else we got here. All right, that looks like shifter arm right there. All right, got the other shifter arm. I believe that's gonna be the inside right there. Shifter tip. This is gonna be the mount for that brake pedal pad. This is gonna screw into that arm uh, that we'll get to a little later on here in the pile. And here we've got the new Apex footboards. Uh, these I actually have not done before myself. Um, I'd only seen them on other bikes that have come into the shop, but we haven't actually installed them. I think these look awesome and I'm excited to see what they look like on this bike. And lastly, this should be the adjustable brake assembly. All right, so that's gonna be the adjustable brake arm there. So we've got all these parts to go in. Um, if you're paying attention, you'll notice there is one piece that we did not get, and that was the shifter linkage itself. Um, obviously on the baggers, it's a, it's a long one like this. Uh, Thrashin' does make those as well as some others. This particular customer opted to get something that um, wasn't available right away. So we're waiting on that part and we're just gonna assemble it as is with the OE shifter linkage. Uh, and we'll swap that piece out when that other one arrives. So. Basically, that's all the parts to go on, and uh, we're just gonna dig in and start getting these installed. Um, one other thing I'll point out is, um, if your bike didn't have passenger pegs to begin with, uh, like a Road Glide ST, for example, you're gonna need to get um, the peg mounts themselves. So these are a pretty generic part. Thrashin doesn't make these. I don't think they do anyway. Um, you can get these from a dealership. These happen to come from drag, so um, you know we just ordered these with everything else. So. We're gonna put these on to do the rear pegs and then we'll keep rolling with everything else. Uh, but I'm gonna reposition the camera and we'll dig in and we'll show you how all this stuff goes on. All right, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and just start with the passenger foot pegs uh, for no, no reason in particular, uh, other than that's where we're at. Uh, so basically the first thing we gotta do is get these mounts installed now. They'll come out of the box. If you get them from Harley, they'll probably have instructions with them. Uh, if you get the aftermarket ones, they won't. Um, not super difficult to install. You just kind of have to figure out which one is left and which one is right, and they are directional. Um, and then you gotta make sure you mount it uh, the correct way as opposed to upside down. So basically, you've got three threaded holes here that will all come with plugs in them if you didn't have pegs on there already. Um, and then the bottom hole, um, which is open. So basically what you have here is the ability to move this thing to three different positions. Now, if you try to put this on upside down, which would be with the big slot at the top as opposed to the bottom, what you'll realize is that um, the holes won't line up in any other position except for the top. They'll, it'll hang off the bottom that way. So it goes on with the one hole at the top and the slot facing down. The next thing you have to kind of figure out is you've got two different kinds of bolts here. You've got one sort of regular uh, bolt there, and then you got another one that's got a shoulder on it. 
um, with a little bit of trial and error, if you don't already kind of have an idea, um, you'll see that there are different thread sizes. So the big bolt goes in the top, the small bolt goes in the bottom. Um, that will also help you, um, if you couldn't figure this out up down before, uh, this stepped bolt fits through the slot. It doesn't fit through the hole. So again, pretty uh, easy to figure out if you're doing it wrong, um, but that's just how it goes. So the first thing we're gonna do is, and these come pre-Loctited, which is kind of nice. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this installed. Uh, there's a lock washer for the top bolt. That's gonna go through our hole here. And we just opted for the middle position for these. They can obviously be moved, like I said, up one spot or down. Um, the middle's a pretty good starting point, I think. So if customer wants to move them, can go up or down if he wants. So we'll just start by threading that guy in there. And then we'll get the bottom one started as well. Okay. And then just get a ratchet and we'll tighten this down. So like I said, there's lots of ways to tell um, if you've got this thing on the right way or not. Um, another way to tell is the angle of the mount itself. You want that facing back, not forwards, uh, just like foot pegs would be on a uh, rider position. Uh, the idea is that if the bike leans over too far or goes down, um, the pegs will fold up and in. If it was pointed forwards as opposed to backwards, that wouldn't work properly. With that now in place, uh, we'll take a look at putting on the foot pegs. And basically what you've got, the way these come from thrashing is you've got the peg itself, you've got the clevis, and you got a bolt to put it together. Um, this is actually kind of nice the way they do this in two different pieces. Number one, it allows you to adjust the angle of the peg on it before you lock down that screw. The other thing is that these become modular. So let's say you had a set of these that were meant with regular male mounts for like rear bagger or any of the early Dyna, anything prior to Milwaukee 8 Softtails um, or other than Milwaukee 8 Softtails, I should say, you get different mounts. So the pegs wouldn't be wasted if you needed to switch them to another bike, you could just change this piece. So we're gonna start by installing the clevis into the mount. You've got the little spring washer that have been around forever. Obviously this is directional too. You wanna to make sure that this flat side with the corner is facing down and the round part is facing up. Okay, so with the pin through, just got a little uh, circlip that needs to be installed, uh, or snap ring, I guess I should say in this case. So I'm gonna grab snap ring pliers, we'll put that on. All right, so just make that, make sure that's fully seated in that groove there, be locked in place. And now we're gonna grab the peg, slide that on, and with a little bit of Loctite on the ARP fastener, we'll go ahead and install that through the peg. All right. And now obviously what you wanna do is just check your alignment and make sure that this is how you want it, ideally flat, presumably. Okay. All right. Got one more little turn. And those are gonna be your rear pegs. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I won't show that because it's exactly the same. Uh, and then we'll just move up to the front and we'll get started on that. All right, so with the back done, we're gonna move up to the front and we're gonna start by doing some disassembly. Uh, if you were just doing the footboard, uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to take the arms off. You can just undo these uh, shoulder bolts here and take this off. But since we're doing the brake as well, we're just gonna take all this stuff off uh, and then we'll work our way back uh, installing from the inside out.
All right, so our first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unbolt this master cylinder uh, to give us a little bit more clearance in order to get the uh, cotter and clothespins out that hold the uh, brake arm itself to the master. All right, now with that free, we're gonna take off the nylock nut here so we can slide this out a little bit. trick is to try to get and get in here to be able to undo this, which would certainly be easier uh, to do uh, with your pipe off, although we're not taking the pipe off right now for anything else. So I'm going to try and do it with the pipe in place. Might just take a minute, but we'll get it out. There we go. All right, so there's that pin, which was holding the clevis pin in place which will come out uh -huh. once that pin is removed. So there is a little washer on the back side, a little washer on the back side, and then the cotter pin. So with those all apart, we can slide that up and out of the master. And now, we can slide this off. So, you've got a couple O-rings on here. There's an inside one which stays in place. There's an outside one. Uh, all this gets reused. Um, inside the arm itself, um, you have a couple of plastic bushings that need to be reused. Um, I wish that wasn't the case. I wish for the price thrash and charge for these, they would include all of the uh, sort of rebuild parts, if you will, but they don't. So um, you're basically instructed to knock these out or press them out, whatever you want to do. So we'll do that. We'll regroup here and um, we'll show getting the uh, new arm uh, put together and we'll get it on. Okay, so here's the hub for the thrash and brake arm. Uh, one side the arm goes on, the other side the uh, clevis mount goes on. And we've got our plastic bushings uh, pressed in here. So these come in and out of the Harley brake arm really easy. Just take a little socket, knock them out, and then you can just press them in uh, one on each side of this. Uh, now we're gonna do, obviously one of the big benefits of this is that it's adjustable. So it might be a little hard to see on the camera. Maybe it'll focus, maybe it won't. Um, there are little tick marks here. And if you reference this, you'll basically be able to adjust in the center position, one this way, one this way, and set that clevis where you want it, which will adjust the height of the brake pedal. So in our case, we wanna put the brake pedal at a lower setting. Uh, so we're going to uh, attach the uh, clevis that way. Uh, and I'll show you that as we get it on the bike. All right, so. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and using the reference marks I just showed you, we're gonna attach the clevis mount onto the inside of the hub. Now, basically what you're gonna do is pick the setting you want between the stock setting, next lowest down, and then lowest of all, you've got three adjustment points, and you're gonna take the bolt that's opposite the clevis, oops, I'm sorry, you can't see that, you're gonna take the bolt that's opposite the clevis, that one, opposite that, and you're gonna line that up with either number one, number two, or number three. So in our case, we are gonna go one setting lower than stock. And we're gonna start these bolts. So I'm just gonna tighten these up. And then with the shaft here on the bike, uh, got some grease on there and the O-ring on as well. Start by sliding the hub back in place. And what we gotta do here is get the uh, master cylinder lined up in there. So before we go any further and start bolting this all in place, um, we gotta get this clevis pin and then uh, the lock pin there with the washer all back in place. So I'm gonna get this all lined up and on, uh, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so with uh, the pin back in place, just gotta reach your fingers back there and get it in. Um, the cotter pin and the clevis pin securing it all together. 
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the O-ring in place on the front side or outside here. And in addition to that, uh, we will go ahead and get the washer and nut put on. And then once we get that uh, just started, we'll tighten our uh, master cylinder reservoir bolts here, and then we'll torque that nut uh, to get all this bolted back up in place. just uh, not torque tight but just sort of hand tight there good I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on these two master cylinder bolts uh, that we took out um, grab that okay and then now with uh, these both in place here, uh, we'll go ahead and do a final torque. Uh, so we've got the torque wrench. We're gonna go ahead and do 140 pounds on the, I'm sorry, 140 inch pounds on the master cylinder bolts. And then we'll do 240 uh, on the brake arm. And that is 240 inch pounds, not foot pounds. All right. So with that in place, we're ready to keep going and get the uh, arm installed. All right. So with this all back in place, uh, we've got the arm ready to go on. Um, we've got the Allen head bolts in here with a little bit of blue Loctite on each one. So what you'll see is a whole bunch of holes here. And basically you've got different points that will work depending on uh, which setting you used on that inside setting. So you're only gonna have the option, there's only, there's only one set of holes this is gonna go into um, so that it'll line up properly. So you just need to figure out where that is. All right, so we've got three started there. Uh, so now we'll just come in with uh, a wrench and tighten these down. Okay. All right, so with the brake arm fully installed, obviously we can come back here and put the pedal on afterwards. I'm gonna take the uh, OE footboard and I'm gonna reinstall this. Now, just to give you a little uh, preview here, the new thrashing board is gonna reuse these arms and it's gonna mount using these shoulder bolts. Now, it'll be easier to put this on and make sure that these are aligned the way they should be uh, to just do it this way and then take the bolts off once this is all back on the bike. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, you don't necessarily have to, I just think it's easier this way. So obviously, uh, just a quick note, these bolts, we uh, went to the wire wheel and took all the old uh, Loctite off of there and then just added uh, some fresh, fresh new. So uh, with that in place, you can see this arm is definitely lower now than it was before. Um, and also, this is the shorter of the two arms. So there's a stock length and then it's either one or two under. I can't remember the, the difference. It might be two under. Um, the That's what this one is. So it's the shorter of the two. So my next move is we're gonna go ahead and deal with this footboard. So I'm just gonna grab the wrenches to take the board off the arms and then we'll go ahead and look at getting the new thrashing board put on. All right, so the couple wrenches here, go ahead and get this taken off. Those bolts out, board will just slide out of the way, and now we can get our new board set up and we'll get it installed. Here's one of the new boards. Uh, basically, you gotta do a little assembly on it first. I decided not to film it because it's really just putting in a whole bunch of screws. So you've got two mounts, uh, one front, one rear, and then you got to do the same thing on the other side, and then you've got these little uh, sliders that need to be bolted on as well. So you got four screws, four screws, three screws, put them all in with Loctite, good to go. Uh, so obviously here's our left side. So this is gonna slide over the existing mounts and then we're gonna mount this uh, using the original uh, shoulder bolts and nuts with a little bit of Loctite.
All right. So there's our board installed. Uh, I did say you were going to use the original shoulder bolts and nuts. We didn't use the nuts. They just thread into the other side of the mount in this case. So these fit really well. Um, they're snug. I know a lot of times, you know, certain boards, you put them on, they can rattle around. These mounts that Harley uses aren't the greatest design. So coming up with something that mounts well to them uh, can be challenging, but this looks really great. I'm, uh, I'm pretty stoked on this. So um, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, pedal pad put on now and uh, we'll start to wrap up this side. All right. So we've got the pad and we've got the adapter. This pad will bolt onto a uh, stock Harley brake arm if you want to do that. Um, definitely we've done those before um, in conjunction with other footboards or whatever. Uh, you can match with the big ones or with these. They both look really well together. You don't necessarily need the arm is kind of my point if you want to run the pad. To run the pad on the arm, you need the uh, adapter plate, which is sort of this right angle piece that will bolt onto the arm and then the pad bolts on there. So the first step is going to be to take the Allen head screw that comes with the adapter. Put a little Loctite on that. And get that started in here. Uh, a quick little install note, uh, the, this does have to go on in this order. If you try to put the pad on uh, to the brake pedal first, uh, this bolt won't clear that bolt that's gonna be back there, uh, so you won't be able to get it on. So, I'm just gonna try and get that at a good angle. That looks pretty good. And we'll tighten this down. All right. And then a little bit of Loctite on the bolt for the pad. We'll set that in place here. Tighten that down. Cool. So uh, we've got our right side done here. Um, just sort of looking at it, my personal opinion, I'm gonna zoom in here a little just so you can see a little bit better. Um, I really like the Apex footboard. Um, I think it's a good shape. It's got a good design, smaller than the original. Um, I'm not a big fan of using foot pegs for brake pedals. So I mentioned earlier, you could use like a P54 slim peg or a full size P54. I just don't think that looks exactly right. I prefer something that's a pedal myself. This one, however, it looks a little bit disproportionate to me. I wish it was just a little bit smaller, um, almost if it was actually the size of that adapter that sort of is only kind of comes out to here. I think that would look a little bit better. Um, but I think we just kind of got to get it all together, get it back down and uh, we'll see what the customer's feelings are on it. But it's a good looking setup. I just think with this small footboard, the brake pedal just looks a little bit big, but uh, we'll see how it goes when we get it all together. But for the moment, um, we're good here. I'm gonna move over to the other side and we'll get the uh, other footboard on and that linkage done. All right, so we're over here on the left side of the bike and we're gonna start by doing some disassembly and get some of this stock stuff out of the way so that we can just go ahead and get the new parts put on. So I'm gonna start by doing the footboard uh, just like we did on the other side. All right. All right, and then next we'll move up and start to take apart the shifter assembly here. Shifter taken off here. All right, 
So that's basically our disassembly there. Um, and we'll just start to get, get the new parts and we'll get them put back on. Like I mentioned before, uh, this linkage, which absolutely should be replaced because it's a pretty lousy part. Not only is it ugly, but functionally, uh, these wear out and break. So definitely this is a part that needs to go if you're doing the rest of this, but um, we're just not gonna do it right now. We'll come back and do it uh, afterwards when we get the part that we ordered uh, that we're waiting on. So let me grab the uh, new parts and we'll start to get them assembled and put them on. All right, so we're gonna start by taking the inner shifter arm uh, along with the bolt that comes with it with a little bit of blue Loctite and we're gonna get that installed. Uh, we're just gonna take that original uh, shaft that came out. Just gonna start to slide that back through. And then basically we just need to get this splines lined up and Just get that in there. And once we get that on the shaft, we can start to put the bolt in. Okay. down. Now I will take the shifter linkage and get that started and find what I did with the bolt for it, or the nut I should say, and we'll put a drop of Loctite on here. And get the nut reinstalled back on there. We got that back in place and now pretty simply just need to take the new shifter arm and that's here and take the, the bolt out. And that's got a nylock nut that comes with it. And that is gonna slide on here now. Before I do this, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the footboard on though, because I wanna be able to set the height in a place that makes sense. Um, and obviously if it needs to be dialed in at all, we can make adjustments uh, using the linkage uh, to shorten or extend that to change the height. So let me grab the footboard, we'll put that on, and then we'll continue with the shifter linkage. Okay, so there's our board back on, didn't feel the need to record that exactly like we did it on the other side. Um, Nice and tight, nice and snug, but it'll still come up as needed. And now we can get a sense of the height for the shifter arm. Good. It's probably a pretty good spot right there. So we'll take our hardware and get that installed. detail obviously will be getting the shifter tip itself installed Obviously you just want to check and make sure there's no binding or anything like that. Um, this looks really great. So that's going to be it for right there. Uh, let's regroup. We'll just uh, take a look what we did and see if there's anything else left to do. 
All right, so that's gonna do it for this install. Um, we got everything done, got everything on, no problems, no issues. And I think personally, everything looks really great and I think it matches the aesthetic on this lower, or excuse me, Road Glide ST really, really well. Um, obviously we started, like I said, with the passenger stuff here, um, pegs and the mounts. Went up and did the rider stuff with the apex footboards, the brake arm, the pedal and pad, along with the other side, the apex boards as well, passenger stuff, shifter linkage, shifter tip, all that stuff. Um, we're gonna go ahead and continue working on this bike. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you're interested in seeing the rest of this build, there'll be another video that just kind of goes over everything that we did on it without going into detail on the uh, footboard, foot control stuff. Um, if you're interested in learning any more about any of these parts or checking out what we use, there'll be a link in the description below the video that you can go and see all that stuff and we'll call it all out so you'll be able to check everything out on your own. So like I said, I think that's gonna do it. So we'll catch you next time.